applications. And I think you're already starting to see that in the industry. Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering IBM Edge 2015, brought to you by IBM. Hey, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Las Vegas for IBM Edge 2015. This is The Cube, SiliconANGLE's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Dave Vellante. Our next guest is Doug Baylog, General Manager of Power Systems. Welcome back to The Cube. It's always great to be with you guys. I love it. And it's great to have you here at Edge again with us. You know, we always love to like put our hands on the rocket ship and try to hold on with the, with the winning formula. You have a, the winning uh, formula of Power Systems. Congratulations. Give us the update. Yeah. What's new? Yeah. Where's the meat and the bone? The hype, well, yeah. you guys launched it with not a lot of hype. It got organic growth, yep. ecosystems growing, then the buzz kicks in. Right. Where's the meat and the bone? Yeah, so it's, uh, as you guys know, because we've been together across this journey, it's been about a two year journey so far to kind of take power from where it was and kind of realign it to the marketplace. And uh, it's, uh, it's amazing to look back over that two year uh, period, how far we've come. And as you said, we sort of put up our, our, our first uh, score on the board here in the first quarter with, uh, with a plus sign. And as I was telling the date before, and now it's a data point, it's not a trend yet. My challenge is not to turn <laughs> multiple quarters into a trend. But I think we're clearly seeing the strategy plus sign around on the, power. Uh, numbers? What do you yeah, mean plus sign. We were up 1% with constant currency in first quarter, which uh, first time in three and a half years we grew in power. Awesome. And, and so why are we seeing that? I think it's back to the strategy we've been on of realigning power to all the needs in the market around data and analytics, big data and analytics, clearly a sweet spot. And again, that's where power as a technology really shines. The work we've done to put power into the cloud, the on-premises cloud, the public cloud, hybrid cloud, and then the efforts to open up power. It's just phenomenal progress with the Open Power Foundation. Um, well, you got some tailwinds, as Dave says, the market's shifting, right? So what are yeah. some of the architectural things that have helped you? One, good call on the strategy and product yep. work. What was it? I mean, you had a thesis, you, you talked about it when you launched it. Right. Smart people working on it, so it wasn't like a guess, it wasn't a Hail Mary. No, it wasn't um, a guess at all. What, what are the key market shifts that, are, yeah. that, are, that you're taking advantage of and highlight those? Yeah, so a couple of the key market shifts. First off, you know, and we've talked about it a lot here at Edge, right? I mean, every client's drowning in data. They're trying to figure out what to do with it and try to get business insights out of it. And I got this crown jewel called Power that does really, really well at data you know, get into geeky stuff, right? Cores, threads, caches, memory bandwidth. I mean, it's all that stuff. Developers. That, and I got smart developers too, which is great to have, and you know, smart across the board. So you take all that and you say, well, how does that really help clients take advantage of like DB2 with blue acceleration? And then build Cognos and other analytics tools on top of that to deliver a really world-class, scalable analytics platform. We've got that, we've had that since last year, and blue on power has been a phenomenal success, right? We've, we've got other industry databases. Oracle 12C came out at the uh, fall time last year, and just last week down at Sapphire Now, I announced uh, SAP HANA solutions on power as well, which really kind of rounds out all the end database uh, you know, offerings in the marketplace. So, and then you sort of build you know, the Mongos, the Marias, the NoSQLs, all the other data-rich offerings on power. So that's been highly successful. Open power is the other big trend. I mean, you know, who would have thought a year ago when we launched the Open Power Foundation in uh, in California with like 25 members, we'd sit here, you know, now a year later with over 125 members, and like real projects going on, right? We had the Open Power Foundation Summit uh, a couple months ago, right? Oh, more than 10. Uh, hardware vendors showed up to show their wares and talk about the innovation they're doing. So we really do feel the momentum. I mean, I can feel it talking to the clients I've met with here. It's really quite exciting. So all the hallway conversation, I was just, I know Dave wants to jump in, but the hallway conversation, I was just yeah. uh, getting a cup of water, and I mean, people are actually sitting down having real deep conversation around solutions. Yeah. I can see customers yep. talking. So it's a unifying kind of moment, right. really, because data is kind yep. of like this interesting intersection between all these right. disparate pilots. It's him. the thing that draws all the pieces together, right? Because, again, you've got to have a platform, you've got to have the middleware, you've got to have the applications on top. It, it forces my sellers, my team, clients to have a different conversation. But you got to have the you got to have the But you got to have the wares. you got to have the goods. That's you gotta right. you got to have so the So the, the goods. premise on power, from my standpoint, is with your architecture and with the workloads in big data yeah. and with little Endian right. capabilities, 
you should be able to, for those workloads, offer significant economic advantages relative to, say, Intel commodity-based infrastructure. Uh, we're we're so, pretty much still offering, even, even with the Haswell stuff that's been recently announced, we've, we've gone through it, we're still offering twice the performance per core at a system level of about 20 to 30% better price performance. So double the performance, 20 to 30% better price performance than Intel. Okay. A and we're open, right? And that's well, so where yeah, this so ecosystem's coming from. So you've seen from. a consolidation play. Now, the open piece, yeah. um, Talk about that a little bit more in terms okay. of what that does as far as the economics. Yeah, so, so you know, when we started this whole open journey, everybody said, well, that's kind of interesting. They're going to you know, create this ecosystem. And clients here at our events would say, I have no idea what that's going to do for me, right? Now we're starting to see, as we build out this you know, massive ecosystem, we're starting to see, or clients are starting to see, us be able to pull some of this technology, some of the solutions, in and become IBM offerings. So I'll give you an example, right? So we've always sort of talked about the Redis's and the software. But also this week we announced capability for Little Indian Linux and Power VM. So now on our large scale up systems that go up to 192 cores, right? These run many firms around the world. You can run AIX, IBM I, Big Indian Linux, if you did that in the past, and now Little Indian Linux, all on the same footprint defined by partition. Right, so we've sort of brought that whole scale out notion around Linux to our you know, scale up platforms for on a partition basis. Yeah, so that's the you know, so age old question. Scale out, scale up, you're saying both. We have both, we have both. And, and they really solve different problems. I mean, we, you know, we're not confused, back to your point, John, of so what was the calls we made? We, you know, I said from the beginning, I know, you know, historically we've loved to sell scale up, and we still do, and we still sort of very much understand that market. But there's a lot of software architectures that just think I go sort of horizontal, I go this way, right? And that's where scale out is played. In fact, our scale out business since we launched it, you know, first quarter, uh, full quarter, first full quarter was one percent growth. Then it was over twenty percent growth. First quarter was over fifty percent growth year to year in that in that part of the market. So we've got something going there in terms of scale out. It is a it is an architectural well, also lot of the, clients inter to the integration game seems is scale up. So the scale up stack driven. Yeah. And there's a coexistence model that seems to be yep. playing out in the cloud, on prem world, which is right. it's integration, right? It's yeah. a ton of integration work. Engineering work, I don't mean like field yeah, yeah. integration. You know, I tell clients all the time, if you're looking to sort of integrate your enterprise and you want to know sort of where to run that you know, web app or that mobile app that's written on Linux, just follow the data. You know, put it next to, in the partition, next to whether that data's on Z or whether it's on power, just follow the data and that'll guide you where to integrate it. Now, I would tell you, when we see a lot of clients starting to deploy Linux on power, they're doing it as a standalone footprint. Why? It's, a, it's sort of a, fa a safe first step. Put it on a scale-out infrastructure, understand it, play with it, learn from it, and then maybe sometime in the future integrate it into a higher, uh, a sort of integrated platform. So you got a spring in your step right now. Performance is good, you made the good calls, yeah. you know, things are happening, rising tide, boats are floating, yeah. as they say. <laughs> What's next? I mean, obviously the chessboard is just the beginning of the game. It's just the beginning. Right? It's a long yeah. game here. Yeah. Um, What's the outlook? What's your vision, and how do you how are you managing this business? Because you know you do have kind of a rocket ship situation going on. I, I think it's going. I don't know if it's a rocket ship yet. Yeah, again, we got to have two data points to figure out what the yeah. trajectory of the rocket is. You can kind of um, see the platform. Yeah, you feel, I can, you can feel see it, it on the, the platform. Hallways. Engines are igniting. You know, beyond the uh, power VM, we we launched two, three new systems this week, which really completes the transition of the portfolio to power. Right. We launched, as I mentioned, our scale up footprint all the way up to 192 cores. So that's that's our highest end platform. You know, 16 socket, bunch of cores, as I said. Second thing we announced was our really sweet spot of mid-range, the 850. This is a four socket system, all right? Four times 12, 48 cores. And what we did was we sort of brought the scale out design mentality, but then we brought the resiliency and some of the really cool aspects of capacity on demand into that four socket space. I think, if I'm right, we're the first vendor in the market to offer on-off capacity in the four socket space. And then we launched our next generation converged architecture called Pure Power, yeah. that really says, you know what, I'm going to take networking, storage, compute, Linux, AIX, IBM I in the future, pure patterns on top of that in the future, rapid management, 
and you've got now got for the, sort of the MSP market a faster deploy infrastructure. And what's the networking in there? Is it is it, is it InfiniBand? Um, it can be. It okay. can be InfiniBand. So it can be Ethernet. It's kind of you know bring your you know whatever you'd like to have. It's very flexible in in the choices we. Okay, provide. so it's sort of workload workload. Yeah, dependent. It's, it's client dependent, workload dependent. What about IoT? You know, I hear a lot about Internet of Things. Is power the platform for IoT? You know, back to kind of where we're going. So if I was to say, so what's next? Now that we've sort of got through this journey of the transformation, you know, we're clearly not done. We've got to, you know, we've got to keep going, right? One of the aspects are new solutions, and I do think power as sort of that data analytics hub, not in the sensor space, right? But in the, the thing that the sensors feed and then drive the analytics, I think power could be that data analytics hub from a hardware platform standpoint. So, you know, it's a matter of packaging the right uh, analytics software, uh, the right hardware and creating sort of that right secure IoT hub. Okay, well we saw Steve Pratt up on stage, we had him earlier on theCUBE, and that's essentially what he was doing. He had right. sort of the mainframe running, you know, the central you know, yep. system, and then he had sort of ingest points, bringing yep. it into power, doing, right. doing analytics, and trying to be anticipatory. Yep. Um, you're saying early days, but I mean, the market there is enormous, right? It's I mean, enormous, your... right? And, and, and again, it's one of these examples where they're flooded with data. The sensors are just driving so much input, ingest of information, you got to make sense out of it. So, CenterPoint is clearly a great example of how you need that sort of hub of, of analytics. So I got to ask about the, this, the contingent of scale out, and you mentioned that architecture. The consumption, that's how customers are buying. I mean, yeah. I mean that's the new consumption pattern, capacity on demand, right. caching, services, all this goodness is coming in. It seems yeah. that IBM has the vision of saying, hey, you know what, we'll put the solutions where the customers will want to consume, right, right. without the big upfront license. Yeah, yeah the, the, the whole learning as we've gone through this, you know, with Google as the chairman of the Open Power Foundation, they've been a great coach. Uh, you know, we've got uh, Rackspace in there, we've got uh, Cloudwinds in Europe. They're all teaching us that, you know, the era we're in, you, get a, you sort of have to put aside your licensing models and say, you got to listen to how they want to buy. They want to buy by the drink. They want to buy components. They want to buy from their supply chain. So, you know, me marching in saying, hey, you got to buy an IBM server, that's a non-starter in a lot of cases. So, part of opening up the platform has been building those new supply chains. So, software can buy from who they buy from as they put power in software. They can buy components, we'll license software. In fact, in first quarter, we just closed our first major IP licensing deal with Suzo Power Core, right? So, we're taking, as we said, that chip and license, licensing it to others. So Doug, for decades the server business has, has marched to the cadence of, of Moore's Law. Right. What's the cadence that you're marching to today? What's the innovation cadence? Yeah, so I think what we're seeing, and part of why you see so many, uh, so many companies gravitating towards the, uh, the Open Power Foundation, that community, I think we all realize the days of Moore's Law are numbered. Even Gordon Moore recently has gone on record saying that, you know, who knows, maybe it's one more turn, maybe it's two more turns. I mean, Diane Bryan's talking about the end too. So, we sort of all see this end of a single company owning the innovation agenda. And what we see is the same thing we saw in open source software, now coming to hardware, where it's going to take a community of innovators at the chip level, the system level, the software level, compilers, accelerators, really being the way in which applications continue to run faster, because they want to. Applications aren't slowing down. The demand for applications to run faster, we're all impatient as ever these days. You got to find new ways to do it, and it's going to be community-based innovation, just like we saw in open-source software. So, what's next for the the community? I mean, when I, I saw that when you guys launched, like you said, yeah. 25 companies, and then we saw it spike up, you right. know, to close to 100, blew through 100. Yeah. Um, where do you want to take that whole thing? Yeah, I think it's less about the number of members. I think we're, you know, sustainable now at 125 mm -hmm. or whatever the number today happens to be, right? 127, I think Tom said. Um, so it's not about the number of companies. It's really now about the output from those companies, right? The real innovation being driven, right? Who is now taking the supply chains we're enabling and starting to take those servers for their needs and deploy them? So as, as we announced, we'll take open power servers in the soft layer this quarter. So clients will be able to come in and license bare metal, virtualized services, blue mix, power in the software domain. Uh, and other cloud providers are doing the same thing. So I think it gets down to deployment and the innovation that comes out of it now versus counting members. Doug, thanks for coming on theCUBE. I know you're super busy. Congratulations on your success. Just for the folks watching who are not here, yeah. what's the vibe here at Edge? I mean, the show's changed. We're hearing, you know, city of Memphis getting a grant for Twitter right. data, 911 routing, right. triaging calls, a lot of big data, yep. a lot of storage. 
How's the show change? What's the show about? And what's the vibe here? And what are some of the hallway conversations yeah, you're so, involved so, in? So having kind of been involved in this show now for uh, I think our third year now of having this, it's definitely come a long ways from where it started to where it is now. I think it's fantastic. You've got all of the systems components, the software, the Z, the power, and the storage coming together at one show. More importantly, I think the industry recognizes we're in a digital transformation and infrastructure really matters for that digital transformation, and we're here to show how we're innovating around the uh, And what you guys are enabling for. And what we're enabling underneath all that. So it's got to run someplace, and we've got some of the best stuff in the marketplace for it to run on. I was commenting to Dave, I've never heard a customer that's been on theCUBE say, I, I want less compute. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Trust me, that's not the conversation <laughs> that happened with me either. I mean, it's just one of those things, it's table stakes now, right? You got to have the performance across the board. It's got to have the performance, yeah. you got to have the innovation. I mean, this really is, you know, less interest in commoditization, because if everybody's buying the same commodity, then they have to, I mean, how do yeah. cloud companies compete if they're all buying the same commodity? They're really looking for innovation. And I think the recipe we have going across our platforms gives the industry that differentiation they're looking for. Yeah, more power, power systems, Doug Baylock, GM. This is theCUBE, we'll be back here in Las Vegas. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante, we'll be right back.